It's hard not to admire what Marco Gonzalez has already accomplished in his big league career. In 2017, the Mariners made a trade that seemed pretty insignificant at the time. They gave up a AAA prospect, and what they got in return, a former first rounder coming off a Tommy John surgery and a whole lot of question marks. Since then, Marco has become one of the biggest success stories at the top of a pitching staff that's had a lot of turnover and uncertainty. We are obsessed with this generation of pitching. It's high velo, big swing and miss arms. So it's easy to bet against a guy like Marco Gonzalez. But in 2019, only seven pitchers in Major League Baseball made 34 starts. Marco was one of them. 200 plus innings, check. Zero time in the aisle, check. All the things that are so easy to overlook, but make this guy one of the most valuable starting pitchers in the big leagues. I was dying to know what his off-season workouts were all about. Where did that giant chip on his shoulder come from? And why he can't hang when it comes to working out with his wife, Monica? My name is Ryan Roland Smith, and today I'm joined by Marco Gonzalez on The Top Step. All right, Marco, dude, welcome, man. We are midway through this off-season, and you and I, dude, I haven't... When was it? I met you at the golf tournament, right? Yeah. 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 And it was just, there's been many times where I've tried to get down there in the clubhouse, yeah. have a conversation, but dude, you're always moving around. <laughs> I'm a hard guy to find. Dude, you are hard to find, <laughs> man. And it's, it's either you and, and your buddy Wade LeBlanc always mm-hmm. off doing something. So yeah. it's been hard to catch you, but dude, I'm, I'm, I'm going to dive in for, another, for the next hour. All right, all right? So it. we've got a chance. We just watched you work out. I'm always curious. I got done playing a couple of years back, right? And I asked you this as we're walking up. Is there stuff that you did five, ten years ago that you're like, eh, it was a waste of time? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, like, I look back on it and now I think of it as, like, oh, that was a waste of time. But I do look back and I'm like, you know, I did I did that because someone else told me right. to do that. Yeah, yeah. And it was either, like, punishment running, <laughs> like, running three miles for time or, like, gassers. And it was stuff where it's like, okay, you're doing it as a team in college or high school. Yeah. And it's it's almost part of the program to do. And I think I look back and I'm like, I wish I would have taken charge and, and made stuff mine yeah, and yeah. figured out what I wanted to do yeah, earlier yeah, yeah. Um, and, and supplemented that. So I look back and I'm like, I was just doing that because everyone else is doing it right. kind of thing. See, I'm, I'm about to jump into a story here, right? 2009, I used to, I, I live up at Green Lake. I don't know if you spent too much time yeah, at Green it's Lake. A, it's a cool area. Actually. So the day after, it always used to be the distance running the day after. Oh, yeah. Right. And I always thought to myself, you know, I came from a background of, um, you know, fitness and stuff like that. And I always tried to work hard. I always wondered because that was when the debate was at. This is we're talking 2009, 2010. Yeah. That was always the debate is running distance. You know, is, is that eyewash? What is that? Right? right. So I'm doing lap number two, not bragging, but second lap around Green Lake. Right. And I see a dude on rollerblades. I swear to God. I'm like, man, that looks like a good leg workout. I'm like, if anyone catches me on a pair of blades. It's over. <laughs> it's over, dude. You can't, you can't it's come over. back from that. But I'm like, you know, screw this. A couple times around, I see a guy on blades. And I'm like, all right, I'm doing it. Go to the shop. No Amazon at this point. Go to the shop. Get, get the blades on. Cover up. Put a hoodie on. Yeah. Not because I'm famous or anything like that. But if anyone catches me on these things. Oh, yeah. It's over. Yeah. Especially, I don't know how it is over here, man. In Australia, it is not cool to be on blades. No, yeah, it's the same. I would say it's, <laughs> it's the same. But dude, I've got to give it to a man. It was an awesome leg workout. Yeah. And it was a blast, dude. Yeah. I've still got them. <laughs> you in need that, to bust them out. I mean, why would you bust them out again? In other words, can we go rollerblading after this? I think so. I Sweet. think that would okay. be... Uh, Done. We should test it out. Done. Maybe, maybe throw it into the routine. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. No, but seriously, man, it was funny because... I was watching you do your stuff down there, and, and you and Derek, who's the, he's the assistant strength coach, yep, right? Yep. You know, you guys seem to have a, pr- a pretty good pattern. But yeah. looking at you, and this is the difference. If you're a guy who's coming off, you know, a couple, you know, IL stints or fatigue or something like that, you go into that offseason and say, okay, I have to make an adjustment. But you're coming off 34 starts, 200 innings. Where do you go from there? I mean, to me, there's always – I mean, as you know, this league is always getting better. So in my mind, if I'm not doing stuff, I'm, I'm going to get yeah. I'm gonna get pushed back. Yeah. Um, so And I know for me, I know that there's – I have more goals. I have new heights that I want to reach. And, I mean, to be honest, it's just it's just the constant push. It's the constant, uh, you know, motivator is someone else is out there getting better. So, I mean, there's guys all around the world, you know, out there working out right now and doing their thing and – um, I'm just trying to trying to do my part. Right. And you you said something down there too. You said you want to be a pioneer <clears throat> and you want to try and, you know, continue to evolve as yeah. a pitcher. Yeah. What about like now I was just down at the winter meetings and I feel like baseball is there's just been an absolute <clears throat> avalanche of third party 
you know, whether it's biomechanics, you know, the weighted ball stuff has just taken over in yeah. the last couple of years where it's just become normal. Yeah. I started doing, you know, weighted ball stuff, um, you know, eight years ago and it helped. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I mean, it was a huge benefit. Is that something like you, is that the kind of stuff you're diving into? I would say that the throwing stuff is probably the least amount of experimenting right. that I'm going through yeah. just because of my history with arm, arm, um, you know, injuries and things. Um, and, and truthfully, I am much more of a feel pitcher. I'm not a huge velo guy, as, as we all know. And so for me, it's about, you know, mechanics and, um, and feel and, and live feedback, that type of thing. Um, more of a traditional approach on, on pitching. Yeah. Um, but certainly the, like the strength and conditioning part, like I want to find new things to, to help my body feel good. I mean, there's so much available to us now. Um, and that's almost the hard thing about being a player nowadays is what do, what works for you? What can you apply? Because there's so many options out there. Yeah, there is. I mean, yeah, like Carl Bodie at at driveline, he walks around those winter meetings like he's God. You know what I mean? It's amazing, (laughs) man. It's amazing. And I get it because it's funny, like even you you go back in the last 10 years it's like velocity is king and then then you have you know for you 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 just said it then just finding new ways to get guys out yeah then you got you who just dom literally dominated the last two years you're the top of a rotation guy is there ever that thought is like oh man i should be throwing harder any of of those little insecurities that that creep in i mean definitely yeah i mean as we know i mean we're 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 men we're in a (laughs) testosterone filled (laughs) environment yeah i mean even in like the weight room i mean you want to be you know pushing some weight you want to throw hard i mean that's what we want we're athletes we want to perform well um so there is that time like every spring training where I see I'm like oh, am I gonna get some 90s in here like let's let's get some nines on the gun you know and so um but then I have to remind myself um, every time I try to throw hard it doesn't go well gotcha. and and for me throwing hard is is executing my pitches being able to get guys off balance right. and then my 90 91 8, 89 whatever it is looks like a hundred at the top of the zone yeah. when I can execute and so um, I think it Pitching is has definitely has changed so much. Even in the time I've been drafted, um, it, it's it's come full circle now to where command and execution is key because everyone can throw 95 and right. everyone can hit 95. Gotcha. So to me, being able to attack four parts of the zone yeah. with four different pitches, I mean that's that's a that's that's my goal. That's but you my, also got these ki- these, <clears throat> these kids who are just obsessed with velocity. Their entire off season is about yeah, you know throwing in a batting cage at a metal square yeah just trying or like to get running down and like th- right seen the run the pull down things? right yeah i mean and and there's some validity to if you if you're trying to um make a club yeah. if you're trying to go for a trout you're trying to get seen that's one of the ways to get seen no doubt yeah, yeah. but if you're trying to perform and stay at a high level you have to put the focus on executing pitches reading scouting reports yeah. uh game management all those things that go into being a successful pitcher not just a successful thrower i think there's i think there's a big difference there for sure and i feel like that kind of separates those guys who they're in a ball they have this off season where they're just letting it eat yeah they get an a ball all of a sudden they're sort of making that jump because stuff wise they're up there 95 96 and all of a sudden it it turns into something where you got to get people out yeah i mean and and we we've seen it so many times there's guys that are 95 96 97 i mean 100 yeah and it just gets lit up and we're not we don't know why we're like this guy should be getting outs and it's it's either you can see it well or he doesn't know how to set it up and i think that that's something that i've just you're constantly having to learn how to use your pitches now speaking of that okay work ethic every time we hear someone talk about you or 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 the thing your characteristics and everything everyone talks about your work ethic i spoke to your college buddy eric lane (laughs) right and he's like man he just even when because you guys met at the end of high school, you went to a summer league, right? Yep, Wenatchee. Wenatchee, that's yep, right. Yep. And he's like, he's a couple years older than you. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's this high school kid, man. He's just like got this whole routine already. You're like, who the hell is this dude? <laughs> and then you go out and dominate, and everyone's like, hold on a sec. Like, dude, you're only you're you're a high school senior. Yeah. Where did I'm gonna get to your dad in a second. I want to ask you about your dad who who was a professional player and your family and everything else. But where, where does that come from, man? Because for me, on the pro circuit, I signed for thirty thousand bucks. I was just a scrub coming into rookie ball. Yeah. But you're, and, and don't take this the wrong way, way, but you're a first rounder. People are kissing your ass a little bit, right? Yeah. You're going to get more opportunities than, than those other dudes. Yeah. How do you maintain that, not chip on your shoulder, but that work ethic? I feel like you constantly, when I hear you speak, you want to prove people wrong constantly. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, people, <laughs> people have that exact mentality of like, you're the first rounder, you're going to be, you're going to get your big league shot. And um, to me, my mentality came from high school. Um, it started in high school. Yeah. I got a shot to make the varsity team out as a freshman in high school. We ended up going on and winning a state championship, and I pitched in the state championship game. And ever since then, ever since I got that taste yeah. of what it felt like to be on a big stage, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Right. And so ever since then, I thought, you know, and I was a scrawny little kid. I mean, I was the same type. I'm doing the same stuff now, yeah. just kind of little cut, yeah. little little change up, yeah, right. little little fastball. Um, and just getting guys out. And so when I got my chance. When, when you say doing the same things now, you that I'm same doing the mentality. Same, I'm pitching the same way right. that I've been pitched, trying to finesse and crafty and all gotcha. that stuff. Um, so after high school, when I got, when I'm getting recruited by colleges, um, I went to Gonzaga because I wanted to impact a program. Right. I knew that going there, I mean, no, I hadn't, I hadn't, I didn't know where Gonzaga was, truthfully, to be honest. And now, yeah. obviously, I'm a proud alum, I'm yeah. a proud Zag, but I went there to pitch against those big schools that we sure. play to show them that I could yeah, still sure. get guys out because I wasn't getting recruited by those schools. So, so, okay, even, even, all right, okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm about to get to that in a second. Yeah. So, Gonzaga, I mean, you, yeah, you're a big deal, man. And I don't want to make it seem like Gonzaga was like my fallback. Gonzaga no, 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 was no. my choice because gotcha. that was the best choice for so, me. So, you didn't have the options to go to those big, Schools. I was getting recruited, but I wasn't on their radar be simply because I didn't have 90. I was a smaller left-handed pitcher, and I wanted to play first base. Right. So Gonzaga wow. was going to give me that shot, gotcha. and they offered me a full-ride scholarship. So I'm like, let's go. Do you, <laughs> do you feel like do you feel like you know the two-way thing? Do you feel like they were legitimately saying, "Look, man, you're going to be a two-way guy in the middle of the lineup," or was it? A situation where they're like, hey, you, you can have a crack at that playing first base as well. We want you as a pitcher, but oh, if you want yeah. to be a two-way, like that was a recruiting. It was both. They yeah, wanted okay. me to come in and, and play both right away. Wow, And man. they knew that I was going to – they told me I was to be ready to be a weekend starter yeah. and to play first base or outfield or wherever. So so, so you had – even back then in high school, because I get the impression, yeah. you know, you're because you got drafted out of high school pretty late. Yeah, 30th right? round. For the Rockies. Yep, and uh, that was uh, – that. Not not a courtesy pick, I would say, yeah. but I, I wasn't expected in, expecting get, to get drafted. And to be honest, I mean, I had the pitch ability that I that I that people saw, but the projection, the the sexiness, the velo, yeah. it, I didn't have that. And okay. throughout college, that's the kind of pitcher that I was, and I wanted to get guys out because of that. Right. And so ever since then, and then when I became a first rounder, um, it was because I could figure out I figured out how to get everybody out and execute pitches, com competitiveness. Um, those types of things that just I, I felt made me the pitcher that I am. I knew that that's what made me great. And, I'm, I'm going to yeah. be honest, man. I thought you had every like five, six different options and I, you were the dude. To be honest, I had a couple options. Okay. Um, but Gonzaga. Like, like where? Like Gonzaga, where else? Um, San Diego. Okay. Um, a couple California schools. Right. Um, UNC in, in Colorado. Um, were, were there schools that you're like, oh, I really want to go there? When, when all yeah. of a sudden you're like, oh, man. Yeah, you know, I, I want to go on and play college baseball, play in yeah. the big leagues, U, and that, that was basically eh, you don't throw hard. University enough. of Arizona. Um, what were some of the was, comments? Was then? my the was my was my big pick, and uh, and it was it was a school that was like I thought was really cool yeah. in high school, gotcha. um, and I it was close to home, somewhat in Colorado, you know, and um, I, I showed interest, and I got nothing back, so I was like, <laughs> all right, well, moving on. So did did you? But was there ever like, eh, sorry, you don't throw hard enough, or you're not good yeah. enough? Yeah, I mean, things? there was there was I, I still remember. Um, <laughs> This was funny because, you know, we have scouts coming in, you know, sitting in our living room at home with my parents and me and talking to me. And there was times where I remember saying, hey, give us a call when you put a nine on the gun. Like, give wow, us a call. Man. And so I was like, all right, uh, sure, I will. I'll do yeah. that. And uh, I ended up, you know, topping out at 87, 88 in high school and going to Gonzaga. And I think, like you said, the first rounder thing, um, when I got drafted and when I went to the Cardinals, I got a lot of that feedback from my teammates, from coaches, everybody's, oh, you're the first round, you're the first rounder. To me, I wanted to prove that, that, that they were wrong yeah, about me, gotcha. that, they, that I wasn't that type of kid. Yeah. I wasn't that type of person that was going to walk around with my chest out saying, so I'm still the first that, rounder. So there was still that, um, what do you call it, that feel of entitlement that you felt like that were just giving you automatically. I felt like people gave me that, that I didn't, I didn't want that. Right. I felt like I didn't want, because I saw how people talked about first rounders and I talked about how they're entitled and they had privilege and everything. I didn't come from that. I got myself to college. I wasn't going to go to college unless I had an athletic scholarship. So going to college was first step. Once I got there, 
um, and getting drafted, I felt like I had earned everything that I had. Did you feel the pressure of being a first rounder though in the organization? Um, like you I, had to live up I to- I felt like I had a responsibility to represent myself and show that I was worth that. Gotcha. So I wanted to show that I also wasn't the type of kid to just yeah. expect it right. to. That's interesting, man. So you went from a guy who really wasn't recruited heavily, right? To going in Zaga and didn't get you didn't get off to a great start. You you were playing as a freshman. A lot of guys yeah. go to school, not yeah. as a freshman, they don't quite get to play. Yeah. But you you were basically were you the dude as a freshman? I played right away. Yeah, right. Um, I was a Friday, Saturday. Sun we kind of mixed in on the weekends. I was a weekend starter. Um, I mean, my second game in college was at Texas A&M, yeah. throwing against Michael Waka gotcha. um, on Saturday, and uh, you know, playing first base every other day. So it, it was. I hit the ground running right <laughs> yeah, away. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so at that point, you were basically just on that B line to be like, okay, high round pick. I yeah, but the thing is, is I loved playing at Gonzaga. Yeah. So to me, it wasn't let's get to the next level it's i'm having a blast here i love i loved i wanted to come back i used that as i was like i'm i might come back for my senior year because i love i love gonzaga yeah, so much yeah i got you okay yeah. that's interesting man i i honestly thought before we sat down that it was this thing where you know your dad played professionally and i'm going to dive into that yeah. towards the end of this but you you're this kid who is a stud right out of high school and you can go to you have five different options big time schools maybe the degree or, or the recruiting trip persuade you to get yeah a Zag the recruiting trip and, and then the education too i mean yeah. you know they they off, they offered me a full ride and so um you know anywhere around the country i mean that's one of the best educations you're going to get and um yeah like i mean i, I tell seager all the time i joke with seager I, I went to north carolina to visit family out there and we took kind of an unofficial visit yeah. and they basically told me that they they won't recruit any colorado kids and so i was Really? I'm gonna go home then. So right. it was, uh, yeah, coach. We sat down with Coach Fox and uh, he showed me the list of the roster. And it was like North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina kid, you know, yeah. all that. He's like, we don't recruit gotcha. the West Coast. And so, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I just, I, in Colorado baseball, you have to leave the state gotcha. if okay. you want to go play. So, so moving ahead, I want to talk about two things. You made your debut in 2014, yeah. right, with the Cardinals. Now, yeah. this is where I thought, and okay, we're going to get to the injury part in a second, right? But, you make your debut in 2014, okay? You're a first rounder. You, you pretty much fly through the minor leagues. You go up to the big leagues. You have, a, what, three starts mm -hmm. before you get sent down? Yeah. Doesn't go great. Yeah. You go back down. If you can go back, and I don't want to put you in this spot because you're you know, a couple of years removed from yeah. you know, being one of, the, one of the dudes in the big leagues. Once you got sent down after that three starts, did doubt start to creep in at all? I think it did. I yeah. think um, so. And I also got called up from double A. So I was one of the kids that, you know, I was uh, uh, the prospect coming up. And, you know, once we had a guy get hurt in the big leagues, boom, right up from double A. When I got sent down, I went to triple A. So I'm coming back and playing with some older guys who are like, man, this kid, this, pros the squad. this, this prospect coming huh. in, this, tw this, I was, I was 22. Right. And so this prospect coming back from the big leagues, like yeah. he's going to be, you know, so I got a lot of that right away. Yeah. Um, fortunately I kind of, I started to make friends with guys. I'm like, Hey, I'm not, don't worry. Like I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying to help the team win here. And, um, but there was some doubt. There was some, there was some doubt of, you know, could I ever be pitching up there? What is it going to take? And, and am I ever going to be that type of pitcher? And so that definitely, you know, that, that first taste, um, if it doesn't go well and for most, it doesn't. Yeah. Um, I, th I think there's some serious thoughts of like, how, what do I do to get back there? Yeah, or yeah. could I, am I even good enough to be there? So. Some long nights, dude. Yeah, oh man. And absolutely. you mentioned it too. On the bus, yeah. Go, go on to AAA. You go back to AAA. Like I, I started the year in AAA, went up. I went up for like a weekend, didn't pitch. Here's a story for you. I go up, there's a weekend series of playing the Yankees, bunch of lefties. So I go in the bullpen and there's like an extra lefty. Yeah. I'm up for three days, don't pitch. And there's some blowouts too. And I'm like, I'm going to pitch here for sure. I'm yeah. hiding in the corner of the bullpen. I'm like, yeah. man, I'm too scared to pitch. <laughs> the Monday rolls around, I get an off day, I get a phone call, boom, I'm going back to AAA. I'm like, that's going to be my story. I'm going to be that dude telling kids, I got to the big leagues. Yeah. Well, no, you didn't. I, I can't look at your stats. I'm like, no, I was there. I just yeah. didn't pitch. Yeah. It was creepy, man. I went back to AAA and you're what? You're around all that bitterness. Guys yeah. who have salty, bit, the salty squad. The salty squad. Yeah, yeah. And nothing against it. I get yeah. it. Cause man, no, I'm, we've been there. I, I've been, I've been man. bitter in, in yeah. AAA before. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it's a combination of you are on the doorstep yeah. Yeah. and you're doing everything you can and you're playing at great competition and it's every day still. Yeah but you're not doing it here. Right. And so it feels like you should be. See, I thought this chip on your shoulder. Now, when you first came, and, 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 tell them, and correct me if I'm wrong here. When you came, first came to the, to the Mariners, right, in the trade, you come over, 
you talked about your injury in 2016 a ton. Yeah. But now I'm, I'm jumping around here for a sec. Yeah, yeah. 2014, you make your, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, any of that. 2014, make your debut, doesn't go great. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I looked it up. You were like, you know, four or five innings, yeah. getting hit around a bit. Yep. Couldn't get through the second time through. Couldn't get the second time through. Yep. Go back down. 2015, you only pitch once in the big leagues. Yeah. Right? 2016, you have the injury. Yeah. So all of a sudden, man, I, and, and I feel like you were talking about your injury a ton once you got to Seattle because that was dealing with that injury in those couple of years is what made you who you were on this this new chapter. You come to a new team yeah. and all of a sudden you want to prove yourself and be a dude because you have that feeling of, you know, I can pitch at this level, yeah, right? And I feel like that's why you talked about the injury a ton. Yeah. Am, am I... No, it was it was a springboard for me. Gotcha. Um, it it allowed me to kind of reinvent myself right. in a lot of ways, um, but also reestablish some strength yeah. um, in some areas. Because in in 2015, I started to develop some shoulder weakness, and I think that's what led to some elbow stuff. So basically, it was kind of two years lost out of my yeah. career, 2015 yeah. and 2016, and part yeah. of 2017. Um, but I get back in, in pitching and in back at a triple a May of 2017. And I remember it was mother's day and I made my first start back in triple a. So I'm officially out of the rehab process and with, with the Cardinals, right? With the Cardinals mm-hmm. in Memphis. And, um, and I'm pitching and, and I'm just thinking to myself, this is my shot. This is, I've been given a second chance yeah. and not many guys get that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I know what I can do when I'm healthy yeah. and I know who I am and I know that now I'm given a chance. Now I have a hundred percent health. And before I was kind of just ailing, I was just kind of not getting, right. not healthy enough, not strong enough to get there. Gotcha. I wanted to get there, but now I have this fuel and I have this reinvented kind of health and uh, strength. In a when, way. when did you feel like, did you start to feel like something's not right 2015? Yeah. At what point in 2015? It was like a month into the season. Really? So and, 20, and you just tried to push through it? Yeah, in 20, it started in, in spring basically because I came in um, in 2015 trying to make the rotation. And it was between me, Carlos Martinez, and Jaime Garcia for the fifth starter. Yeah. And pitched really well in camp. I think I gave up like one run all of camp. So I, I went full gas in, in spring training. And we know how those, that kind of goes for some guys. I came in too hot, yeah. started the season, and I got fatigued. And I tried to keep going, and yeah. it just I got weaker and weaker. Yeah. So I think I just hit the gas too soon that year. Um, but going into 2017, I think that's why it came up so much is because – all of a sudden, it was like I was back into what I was doing before three right. years prior. So you, know? you didn't go into twenty, you didn't go into into twenty seventeen thinking like you were a first rounder. You've you've let people down. It wasn't like that. It was more no. of a. I've, I've had time to decompress. Yeah. I feel like I'm healthy right yeah. now. Did you ever worry about? Oh, this elbow is not going to be the same. No. Did you deal with velocity? Like, did you come out rehabbing and all of a sudden you you pump an eighty three? I mean, I was <laughs> nervous that that was going to happen for sure. <laughs> I was nervous that I was going to be low 80s, but you know what? Like yeah. I thought, screw it. If I yeah. if I come out doing that, I'm still going to try to get guys yeah. out. I'm still yeah. going to I'm still going to have my my command and everything. Yeah. Um, but my velo was actually better that year. I came out. I was 92, 93, 94, really? um, and I've been you know 90s since then, low 90s or whatever. But um, no, I think it was more like the pressure was off because I wasn't the first rounder yeah. prospect anymore. I was a guy who right. came back from from an injury. Yeah. So to me, I had more to prove to myself than I did to anyone else. Gotcha. And that little, that's amazing. That radar gun can give you that testosterone boost. Oh, yeah. It? You hit, uh, hey, look, man, I, I was a dude, I was never pumping up a 90s, I'll tell you right now. I yeah. signed, I was trying 85. I'm yeah. like, I had to scratch and claw to, get, to yeah. get a 90. Yeah. But when you start seeing some 92s, 93s, yeah. all of a sudden, dude, it just changes and you start attacking guys and yeah. everything else. But you, you're, you're right though, man. If you're trying to throw too hard, it can take you out for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I, I think a good fastball is just a mentality. Right. I, to me, I think um, we got a lot of guys that, that they want to throw inside, they want to throw up in the yeah. zone. And I think for me, having a, an attack mentality yeah. is the best kind of fastball yeah, yeah. that you can have right. because your, your, your body will follow your mindset. Yeah. Yep. So for me, when I think about attacking, if I go in with 89, I'm going to go in hard with 89. Right. I'm not going to soft to put yeah, it yeah. in there yeah um so i think it's all mindset and tell me if this is true or not i read this mike Matheny said that you and now this is i think this is pre-analytics because i want to ask you about how you kind of deal with analytics and stuff like that yeah. he said to you and you can completely say this is completely false <laughs> you have to start throwing a cut, a, a cut fastball yeah a cutter is yeah. that true <sighs> so 
he he kind of he showed because so Mike's a former catcher, yeah, um, and he would catch some bullpens in spring training, and he wow. was one of the guys that Look at him. showed me where to throw my cutter yeah. that would, it would be effective. And he said, you, you need to have something that gets guys off of that fastball that you can get inside on righties, go away to lefties, that sort of thing. I didn't have a slider, so I think that was kind of the pitch that I had developed in college to be able to use. Okay, yeah. so you were throwing that thing back in college. I was throwing it a little bit, but not if not knowing what I was doing with it. With that, if someone tells you, especially you've got like Mike Matheny or whoever, it says, it suggests, uh, does that, see for me, in 2010, I, I sucked, man, I was terrible. And going into spring training, I was coming off a really good year in 2009, and in spring training, they're like, hey, we want you to start throwing a cut, a cut fastball. Yeah. I could never throw hard enough, dude. It was like yeah. 82, 83. So yeah. there I am in spring training. In my mind, subconsciously, I'm thinking, well, my fastball's not good enough yeah. inside part of the plate. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, you start doubting that fastball. All yeah. of a sudden, I, I pitched away from contact. Right. Was it ever that? Like, I think so. I think, yeah. I think I definitely ran into that. Yeah. And I think my first stint in the big leagues was – all of that it was I don't want to get hit I don't want I don't want to find yeah. a barrel yeah. and I think it wasn't until I came here um, late in 2017 I think I came out of the pen again here against Oakland and I thought to myself why am I why am I doing this I've never done this in my life right I've it's never been this guy but all of a sudden you get here and you get in a big stadium and you're facing guys you've never faced before and all of a sudden you get a little tight and you start trying to place things yeah. and you run away from contact and it wasn't until I, I, I dropped that and I've I've started going after people yeah. that I, st I started attacking more, and that's yeah. that's what's made me the pitcher that I am. Yeah, now. right. Well, because I I love talking about you on air. I love talking about you know your cutter and how in because you come over here and the whole thing with you. I don't know if you read this stuff or not, but multiple times through the lineup. Oh, this dude, you know, you come over in a, in a, in a trade. It wasn't a yeah. huge trade at the time, and yeah. I'm about to read you some of the quotes too when you came over. Not from me, <laughs> from other people. I want to, I want to, you know, yes. I want to bounce this off you, but. <laughs> But for me, it was it was the 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 cutter was the separator mm -hmm. for me, man. When you started throwing that thing, mm -hmm. twenty eighteen, game over. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel the same? I mean, it was that because sure. everyone talks about your changeup, and mm -hmm. I get it, man. It was plus pitch. I was talking to your college buddies. They're like, dude, we throw sim games, and that changeup was filthy. Yeah. But for, for <laughs> yeah. me, man, that that cutter was just comp complete game change. Yeah, it's allowed me to open up the zone, and it's allowed me to pitch. It's it's made my fastball better. Right because I can use it more and I feel more confident because now you can't sit fastball yeah, yeah. and it looks four seam out of my hand. Right. So if you're going to sit four seam, then I know exactly. And I can tell when guys are doing it too. So um, for me to go back door, go inside, go front door to lefties, go away to lefties. Yeah. I mean, there's so many uses to it that yeah. I feel like it's been so it's been fun mm -hmm. because it's just been it's, it's allowed me to have this fun weapon to experiment with. Has anyone, you know, from when you started throwing it again in the big leagues, because you you weren't throwing it so much. You talked about because of the injury, right? Yeah. You were a little bit worried. Yeah. Was yeah, it, I gave myself a little time because right. I didn't know how my forearm would do with it. Was there anyone from when you started throwing it again that said, hey, try this grip, try that? Especially to because the hardest thing for me throwing yeah. that cut fastball was – was that little back door, like yeah. throwing on both sides of the plate. Right. No, not, to not, hard, to not get around it. And yeah. Try to, yeah. Um, no, I credit, uh, actually credit Lance Lynn for my okay. cutter grip. Wow. Um, so Lance, I wish we had a ball, but Lance basically grip a four seam and you just turn it so that right. now when you pull down, yeah. it's shooting out of your hand this way to the inside. Right. So you. this middle finger's up against the seam and yeah. when you, you're not twisting, you're not doing anything, you're just pulling down. Gotcha. And the ball is offset so it comes out at that angle. Right. And basically, that was what gives the true four seam spin, but it's just angled turning this way. Right. And then when I when I think of you know going back door, I just think, okay, I'm gonna drive to that spot. I'm not gonna get around it. And you just gotta trust it's gonna come back. Sometimes it's like one of the, the boomerang. You just gotta trust it's gonna come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. You know, yeah. yeah all right. Hey, there's, some, there's some trust in there. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. The old boomerang. I got one in the backpack. I, I don't have a baseball, but I yeah. got a boomerang. We're, all gonna, right. we're gonna throw that thing around. You like, yeah, you like that? I threw that in yeah. there. No, I, I love it too. It's, it's that easy. Just to backdoor that cutter. By the way. It is the hardest thing to do <laughs> is to just go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to backdoor that cut yeah. fastball because yeah. that's a pitch that you – it's all about extension, right? So right. anything on this side of the plate, you're so used to getting that extension. All right. of a sudden, for me, backdooring that thing, you yeah. take a little bit off and it just becomes a, a <clears throat> spinner. Well, if, you, if, you tr if you try to pull pull across, right. um, you're going to yank it or you're just going to – it's going to spin outside. I mean, it's going to cement – the cement mixer – to the to the arm side if you see one of those you might see me dang it like <laughs> yeah so it's but yeah. you know I, I would say you know as far as making pitches the the two two three two backdoor frozen take right. on a backdoor cutter is like 
my the most amazing feeling on the mound just to that gets the chest get, get the strikeout and you're like it. ha yeah, <laughs> I I got it. Got that's you. awesome <laughs> yeah now speaking of Matheny right and I want to talk about you know we talked about um, him talking to you about a cut fastball and this is yeah. I, I don't think this is coming from a rap soda machine and an iPad or like that Mike, no no Mike, no he was catching me and saying gotcha. that yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so that's just straight eyeball test saying, for sure okay yeah so Mike Matheny I read just recently he went to an analytics class, like an mm -hmm. online analytics class or something like that, sure. right? I was just down at the winter meetings and obviously analytics is a huge part of the game, yeah. right? But one thing that I want to ask you as a player, what is the process with during the season, spring training, does someone come to you with an iPad and say, <clears> hey, <throat> you do this good, you don't do that? Because there's got to be that trust element too. Yeah, This information like, well, this is like my third best third best pitch yeah. from that, that feel standpoint or that yeah. confidence standpoint. Now you're telling me to throw this with two strikes. Yeah. So what's, tell me the process. How much do you use analytics? So I, I use it when I want to fine tune something, um, you know, and spring training is the perfect time because we're still building up strength. Um, you're making those adjustments, you know, you have a little bit more um, relaxed game setting to be able to work on things. So those are great times at bullpens, um, you know, they're standing out there with iPads. And, you know, I, I think I've developed a relationship with with uh, some of our staff, you know, I'll, they know when I want things, they know that they don't want us, they don't want to drown me with numbers. Yeah. I want a couple things here and there that I can use to make a pitch better. And you got to be able to translate it to me. You got to be able to tell me, hey, like, this is what this is. And DeLunis does a great job of that, too. Okay. He's, he's a good translator for the data to the personal side, the pitching side. Because you tell a guy, hey, this is your RPMs and this is this. And it's like, how do I use that? Okay. What do I? And I think that's the stigma for most guys, and especially older guys in the game, is tell me how to use it. Because when I'm out on the mound, I'm not thinking about spin rate. I'm thinking about getting the guy out. Gotcha. So it can't, at the end of the day, analytics can't be just the numbers. It has to be the application of it and what you do and how you, tr and how you talk about it. I mean, it has to be, there has to be a, an intention behind it. Did you find things out about yourself? And like when the numbers come out, do they say, hey man, dude, yeah. your fastball, your two seam fastball sucks compared to this or any, <laughs> obviously I'm not. Sometimes, I mean, so, sometimes it's, and, and I've told people, I want you to be honest with me because that's the only way we're going to get yeah, better. I don't right. want you to be like, Hey, like, it's okay. Like, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not bad, right. but it's not great. Like, no, tell me honest. Yeah. Like, but I, I think this past year, um, the second half, we talked a little bit about my fastball, how I felt it, it started to jump a little bit and it started to get better. Um, our, coaches started telling me my spin rate was getting better I was getting behind the ball more my four seam was getting better ride so I said hey like if you like it pitch pitch up in the zone with that thing because you're gonna get some swings and misses and sure enough I mean I started going up I started going up and into guys um, brushing guys back and then ev it made everything better yeah. so when there's a little something little in there that you can just a little bit at a right. time kind of implement, that's I think what's important so you said sometimes it's too much is there guys you've played with it's just they rely so heavily on what the iPad says when yeah. they throw on that rap soda. I think I, I've seen guys every time they play catch, they have a rap soda. Every time they throw a bullpen, they have a rap soda. Yeah. And it to each their own. Everyone's gonna have their own process. To me, I benefit a lot from someone standing there watching me, talking to me, being like, "Hey, how did that feel?" He'll go down there and and watch, maybe take a couple pitches and see what it looks like. You when you look at that rap soda screen, because I've I've got one at home. I, I go back and. Yeah. Um, you something to rip in the backyard. Yeah, sometimes. pretty much. Yeah, yeah against yeah. against the brick wall. Sweet. My backyard's not that big, dude. I'm not. I'm not rich like you. I got a little courtyard back there. <laughs> but the the uh, the um, you know, when, when the numbers pop up, and this is something I was I was trying to do recently. It's just trying to educate myself. Are you looking at that screen? Are you using this like in the off season too? Are you looking at that screen and, and you understand these what the numbers are? Or? Not so much. Right. No. Um, I'm my, that's that's my, kind of a healthy balance, right? Yeah. Because you don't I, want to be getting stuck into these numbers, like you said. Right. And I, I want to know how my body feels. I want to be – I think it's really important, um, you know, in, to be in here in the big leagues and to stay here. I think it's really important to know how your body feels and to be aware and, and to, to have uh, – take, you know, ownership of that. And I think – if you're always relying on a screen to tell you how you feel and how your stuff's doing, you got to know because you got to make adjustments out of the mound by your by yourself. Gotcha. You're not gonna have an iPad out there. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I, I like to start basic, and then in spring training, we start to implement some things. Have you have you ever, you know, coached guys, teammates, yeah. younger guys, and said, "Hey, man, look, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that." Yeah, 
I think I think that's a big role for me. Yeah. Um, and with the history, um, with you know my dad being a, a pitcher, I mean that's what he that's how he raised me. You know, coaching, talking, being able to communicate during a bullpen. Um, being able to feel and watch pitches and things like that. So um, I know that I can really help younger guys coming up. And I think that I, especially with even with guys like you say, I mean, guys who he, you know, just transitioning over here and, and being able to develop a good routine and, and, you know, take what people are saying and be able to use it because he has so many voices in his head, you know, yeah. going on at one time. And, um, you know, being that guy for him to be like, hey, what what's going on? Talk to me. Like, let's figure it out. Yeah. When Sheffield comes up, when Dunn comes up, when all these new guys come up, um, I need to be that guy that's yeah. okay. Let's let's figure out a let's slow it down. Let's figure out what you got. Let's gotcha. go from there. Yeah, it's amazing, man. I mean, you look around youth baseball, especially. I mean, I don't know if you if you pay attention to any of that. I mean, but literally, if a sixteen year old kid, mom and dad, they have to go to some facility and they have to have the gizmos. Yeah, you know. And yeah. sometimes, man, I go back to Australia and I'm coaching kids and. A kid comes up and says, hey, what was my spin rate? I'm like, dude, you've got a thousand things we want to get done first, right? Gosh, yeah. So if you, okay, yeah, it's so, so different. It's so different. Oh, nowadays, yeah. You know? oh, it's, it's crazy. And yeah. I mean, look, you, you guys don't have kids, right? No, no, not yet. All right, so let's go, let's go 25 years down the track, right? <laughs> Your son, I, I don't want to do this because, dude, you, you're killing it right now. I don't want you to have to think about the future or anything like that. <laughs> but you've got a 16 year old son. He's okay. six foot four, just a, just absolute Adonis. Looks like me. Matter of wow. fact, I'm jealous, actually. Yeah, he's it's not Marco six, Jr., four? it's Ryan Gonzalez. You've named him after me. Wow. But he's just an absolute stud. <laughs> All of a sudden, he goes to this facility and there's just the gizmos, you know, yeah. like I'm talking the K vest and the whole thing. When you're coaching him, it's way more important, right? To, to, have that feel for everything first. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, and I think it's just, it goes back to things that my dad told me when I was going through it. I mean, there was other coaches that would coach me and other teams I was on, and but then I'd have my dad. And he, he would tell me, he'd be like, hey, take everything that people say, take it with a grain of salt and say, thank, thank you for the, thank you, I appreciate it. But take it for what it's worth to you. Don't, don't, don't let it, overwhelm you and and change your perspective because there's going to be a lot of a lot of things that you're told in your career and it's about how you make it your own and not how you just oh yeah I'm gonna do that oh yeah you told me this I'm gonna do that like you can't be that guy you have to take take what you're given and make it your own and and do it with a sense of pride of of hey this is my arm my career yeah. my life yeah. and go forward with that and and it, you know my dad's told me hey if you don't agree with something I tell you Tell me to screw off. I mean, it's you have to understand that you can't just listen to what everybody says. Right. And this is where I'm going with this. Your dad, right? So you were old enough to remember him playing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. About five or six when he stopped. Five or six when he stopped. That's yeah. right. Because yep. he finished his career playing indie ball. Yeah. Right? A couple of years in independent baseball. So so is that it was that your guy? I mean, even yeah. we talked about 2014, 2015, yeah. the, the last couple of years with the, the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Was that was that your go to? Yeah, I mean he always is. I mean yeah. he's uh he he's coaching now with the Rockies. Yeah. He's uh he's in uh high A double A with the Rockies and um very very high intellectual high level coach. I mean he's just got he's got such a feel for the game. It's incredible. Yeah. Um but he's co he coached in Lancaster, California this year, so he got to see me pitch in Anaheim and Oakland. He'd come watch me pitch on the road. And um you know he, even after the game, I mean he sometimes he wouldn't say something, sometimes he would say something. Um, he's got a good read on when I need to hear things or when I need to, when I don't need to hear it. And, um, you know, he'll be, he'll text me. So he'll be like, Hey, don't know if you want this, but I, I got something for you. And it'll be a picture of me in a still frame of me pitching. He's like, Hey, you're getting into this position. Like, what do you think about this? Right. And he just got such a good eye. So gotcha. I, I, I'll, I'll always trust him. So it was never a situation you're, you're a teenager. Cause I find this too, you know, like teenagers, especially me, I'm like, yeah, whatever mom and dad, yeah. clueless. <laughs> yeah. And now that I'm on, I'm like, yeah, yeah they're, they're onto yeah. something. Yeah. Was there ever, so he, when he was heavily involved, even when you were a teenager? Yeah. I, I mean, there, there's those times when, you know, you're like, Dad, all right, whatever. But yeah. when, when we turned it on and when it was baseball time, when it was bullpen, when we were in the cage hitting, I mean, when we were doing stuff, it was like we're competing. We're going, we're doing it. And it was, it was full. And he was coaching me, calling me out. Yeah. You know, there was, there was strict, uh, you know, strict words said. I mean, it's just I knew a work setting between versus a life and 
parent son setting. You know, that was not a parent son. Right. That was my, he was my coach. Gotcha. So when we were in that setting, it was, it was go time. When you were in high school, he wasn't coaching professionally at that point. No, he started coaching professionally. Um, the year, so the year I got drafted in 2013 was his first full year. He was in spring training with the Rockies gotcha. for the first time that gotcha. year. Okay. So we kind of started at the same time. He coached before they coached high school. He coached, uh, at Colorado state and, oh, at, right. and high school. And he's just been the baseball dude yeah, in right. Colorado right. for okay. as long as I can remember. I gotcha. mean, anyone who's wanted to be a pitcher, who's gone on to play, co- I mean, the list of college arms and pro arms that he's mentored over the years is insane. Really? So he is the name for, for baseball in Colorado. And he's, he's one of the first, I mean, big, you know, professional players out of, out of Colorado. I mean, he was the pioneer. So I'm just kind of, I'm continuing the work. So, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, and, and just on that, so, you know, you always talk to the guys who had parents who played professionally, right? And you know, the kids who grow up in, in a major league clubhouse. Yeah. And this is what I want to ask. So you were old enough to watch him play um, in the Atlantic League, right? Yeah. Do you remember those days? I remember running around like a little crazy man. Yeah. Um, I remember sitting in the stands with my mom, um, eating pizza. I don't remember the specifics of every game, but I do know, I've heard stories and I used to be able to, you know, imitate everyone's swing. I used to be, I, I was out on the field taking BP, running around, um, you know, showering in the clubhouse. Like I just, my dad told me I was just a, I was a, I was a regular, you know, I was just a, a I, I knew the, I knew the ropes at a young age. So. And, and your, your dad obviously sounds like he was one of these guys who just loved the game. Yeah. So like once Still you, does. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so because I always ask this, I'm around guys who they never played in the big leagues. They mm-hmm. played minor league baseball. So there's that resentment towards, towards professional baseball. Ah, oh, it's too hard. Or, or they, they start to rub off that, well, you know, I didn't make it to the big leagues or whatever. There's that, that ego involved. Obviously, your dad didn't have any of that kind of stuff. I think there was some, you know, some some wish, um, you know, that he had continued to play. I think he – I know for sure, and he talks about this, that he should have had a shot yeah. at, a, at, a big league, at a big league job. Um, and and I, from everyone that I've heard that's played with him agrees with that. Yeah. So to him, I don't think there's resentment. I think he's a proud, uh, you know – dad of a baseball family now and my brother's still playing in college and um you know I think it's just he's I see so much pride in him and especially with him coaching now he's going to be a big league coach so I think when he gets there it's going to be um he'll have a proud uh a proud you know career to look back on that's I think. awesome man yeah. I mean it's so cool because again I mean I, I spent a ton of time in the minor leagues yeah. you know and then you have and just, it's it's interesting because it, it's tough, man. It is, the minor leagues are no joke, yeah. especially when you play that long and then you look back and all of a sudden, now you've now you got a family, yeah. the travel, yeah. all these little things that, that just keep piling on. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, playing indie ball, you're not making much money, the whole thing. And you've got a family. He's got, I mean, he's got a son who, you know, two sons, right? Start, yeah, I was starting school. I was yeah. going to be six, you know, starting yeah. kindergarten or whatever. So, so. All, all this stuff piles on, but all of a sudden, then you get to a point where you were stud when you were 12, uh, I was okay. I was, like I said, I was a small kid. Okay. So I was the, I was the kid that, you know, I, I didn't have any pop at the right. plate. I mean, I was, my barrel would stop when I hit the yeah. ball and I, I, but I could pitch. That was, yeah. that was my thing. So. Gotcha. Cause I, I mean, I got a one year old son. Yeah. I know he's only one. I got a four year old daughter as well, but I'm like, man, do I want to put Lennox through this? First of all, not the <laughs> professional side of things. Yeah, and I yeah, played yeah. the big, I'm talking yeah. about youth baseball's crazy now. It's right. so competitive. That's, that's the thing where I, I've wrestled with the thought, and I'm sure when I'm a dad, I'll know better. But um, you know, do I want to coach? Do I want to? Do I want to put my kids through everything that I that I've gone through? And and of course, I want my kid to, you know, play sports and 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 grow and and do what they want. Yeah. But um, it's it's a long road, and it's a it's a sacrifice right. for sure. So I was believe it or not, growing up in Australia, I was a huge hockey fan. I loved it. I mean, I could barely see it. I mean, look, I'm I'm old now, man. But, so we didn't have YouTube or any of that kind of yeah. stuff. But I remember any chance I got to watch it, I was like, oh man, I want to play that so bad. <laughs> the closest ice rink was like three hours away. Yeah. So yeah. my son, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh vicariously live through him. He's gonna play hockey okay. and I'm just gonna push him and yeah. push him and push him. Yeah. He's gonna play in the NHL. I can't so, wait to see you yeah. skate. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah. You're, gonna have to be, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna have to be out there running around. Yeah, things, exactly. So, yeah. I know, I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep pushing him towards that. I wouldn't mind having my son or daughter be a golfer. I think that would be a pretty interesting sport. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, I don't know. I, but I, even I think that, man, even that'd that, be fun. Ten-year-olds now are getting sponsored, and, yeah. all, and oh, it's nuts. Yeah. Anyway, youth sports just scares me. I got a four-year-old daughter, yeah. and and she she's you know she's a little athlete, man. She's yeah. four, and she's 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 taller than all the other kids. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, man. Now we got to start diving into yeah. the thing. The thing that I worry about for my son or daughter is they're going to be 
the professional player's kid. Right. They're gonna, that's go. that's what yeah. I was too. And so you're looked at differently than anyone else on that team. Yeah. People talk Good to you. Player. They know. They know that your parent was a professional player. They're gonna. You're gonna be. There's gonna be some pressure on you, yeah. and there's gonna be some ridicule from other players. Right. Like, oh, you're. Yeah, you're just here because your dad. Yeah. You know, you're just here because of this. And that's a that's a hard thing to go through. Yeah. That's that's not easy. And and I think you can either go one or two ways with yeah. that. So that's funny, man. That's right. I'd play with guys and and their kids. They're 12, 13, running around like, oh, does he, you know, does he play baseball? He does. And I mean, do you coach him? And it's like they try and separate a little bit. You have to. Yeah, ha- yeah. Because when when I got to when I got to high school, um, that was when my dad stopped coaching me uh, on my on the team per se. He wasn't mm-hmm. you know with with us. Yeah. And I said, Dad, I, I'm gonna do. This. I gotta do this on my own. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna separate because. Yeah. And he was always, always in my corner at every yeah. game. Yeah. Obviously, after the game, we're talking baseball, we're talking shop, everything. Right. But for him to step aside and let me do yeah. that and not be the guy that's yelling from the stand. I mean, my dad was never that way. Gotcha. So it was very, very healthy. I would say. Yeah. All right. So let's go back. You get traded, right? Now I'm gonna read out a couple of quotes. I love this because, and and I'm, I wasn't sitting there saying, "Oh, this guy's gonna be a stud," right? Um, so I'll, I'll admit, but I'll, I was here's some of them, dude. Because you Truth get traded, you go straight from Memphis to Tacoma. Yeah. And at that point, this is at the point. This is 2017. The Mariners were still kind of in it. You know, they could. And I had a chance to, to add on a little bit. Yeah. And you get traded as like kind of like a prospect for a prospect. Mm-hmm. You know, coming over. Yeah. He, these are some of the quotes. Mid rotation at best. Right. Uh, there's nothing exciting about this trade. Uh, what was the other one? Um, you're a health risk. I'm just reading a couple, and this is yeah. my favorite one. Oh, he's, he's a depth piece. Don't you yeah. love that when you just yeah. get thrown into? Yeah. Oh, I'm just a just a. I'm going back up. Yeah. I'm coming into back up. I love that. So these are the dude. Now you're coming off two years, an opening day start. I mean, we we keep going back to when you were younger. Did you set out to say, all right, man? And even after, let's talk about even before the injury and everything else, yeah. were you looking at this game, I'm going to be an ace on a staff in the big leagues? Or were you a guy just like, man, I just want to be a starting pitcher in the big leagues. That's good enough for me. I mean, I think going into pro ball, I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to be a big leaguer. Um, I don't know if I had specific dreams of like, I'm going to be a front line yeah. ace. Because yeah. truthfully, I didn't, think I, was, I didn't think I was going to have that in me and, and I didn't know what it was going to be like getting there. So um, I think I knew... You know, I had a lot of advice to you know cherish the experience, yeah. cherish the journey. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what it's about, and you know, go day by day. But I think looking back, I mean, it's things like that where I've heard that my whole life. Right. I mean, I had I told you I have had guys sit scouts sit in my living room tell me to call them when I hit ninety. So, and so you say, read, you and read say, this and stuff. say and say I've heard it. Yeah. I've, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. it's hard to be blind. It's hard to turn a, turn away from it. Yeah. Um, but things like that where you know you. We know who we are as people, and we know what we can do. And I think, when I think of someone that's that's saying, I, I just think it's just it's ignorant. And I think right. you can never put an expectation or a projection on someone because you don't know what's inside of them. Yeah. And so I think, uh, I, I mean, I enjoy I enjoy proving people wrong. It's it's been one of the joys of my career is, um, you know, having people come up to me and say, you know, we're 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 thankful that you're here. And, you know, it, it worked out. And, and um, I think, you know, that's, that's what's been great about being here is that I can, I've had that shot again to prove some people wrong. And, and hopefully I can continue to do that because that's been, that's one of the joys of my career. Do you ever sit back and say, man, this is, I can't believe what I've done? Like, do you, do you ever, do you, are you in shock of what you've done? Or you're like, oh, I was supposed to do this. No, I, I don't think, I don't think of it like I, I was supposed to do this, but I think there's a level of, I'm trying to make it normal. Yeah, I'm trying right. to every day. I'm trying to just push forward yeah. and not not think gotcha. about. It's like when you're. It's like in free solo. You know, yeah. like <laughs> at the top, the guy's not like, oh man, like this is impressive. I've made yeah. it this far. It's like no, you just keep climbing. You know, yeah. and and so um, I think it's it's one of those things where I look back and it's been there's so much has happened, but I think yeah, I'm I'm very I'm thankful because all of that has created this this atmosphere and this this the character of who I am now I wouldn't be where I am if that didn't happen does this do these quotes this kind of attitude towards you coming to a new team does that motivate you yeah and especially because we are Seattle people 
So I'm right. having, I'm go. having, it, it's a different, yeah. it's a different environment because I'm coming here. We have family that live here. We have friends that live here. Gonzaga's close. Yeah. And we have people who are like, yeah, people are talking about how like, you're not, you're like, they're skeptical of you. Like, and, and I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Like we're going to be, fine. Yeah. you know? And so, yeah. um, it, it's a different environment playing in somewhat of a hometown and having, having those expectations and having that ridicule. So, um, but like I said, I mean, I knew what I, was get, what I was getting into. I don't think I'd be here if I wasn't okay with it. If you didn't have this, do you think you'd still be as motivated? No. Uh, okay. I mean, if, if people, if people were, were saying that I was, I was the truth, I was the goat, I yep. was this and that and this and yep. that, I don't think I would be um, – I mean, if, if people have done that my whole life, I don't think I'd be here right. um, if people had given me everything. So I truly feel as though I went into it and played every game with a chip and I feel like that's what's given me what I have now yeah because so why change you know yeah because there's been times man I mean going back to when I was playing or even now like trying to do things I'm trying to do now it's like if if everyone tells me oh yeah you're really good at this or that I'm, I'll just kind of sit back and not, yeah. not that I get lazy but I'm like oh I'm good yeah and all of a sudden you get complacent and yeah. it starts to plateau yeah so you feel like you constantly need so you know if you're out there on Twitter make sure you, you blow him up yeah I, I, right? think, I think too like when I'm, re I'm really bad at accepting compliments and praise. Yeah, I'm, gotcha. I'm really bad at that. Yeah. Um, and so when I have family and things like that, I say, oh, yeah. you had a great year. Yeah. It almost like shuts me down. Yeah. And I almost want to say, you know, like, thank you. But like, I'm not done yet. Yeah. Like, we're still yeah. going, yeah. you know, we're still have more things to do. And so I think um, if anything, I just like re deflect it and like, ah, we're just, yeah. yeah, thank you. But I'm still working next yeah. year, you know. Yeah, yeah for so, sure. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, all right, when people you know, say well done and everything else, at the end of 20, 2018, I was stalking your Instagram uh, last couple of days, by the <laughs> way, just going through, yeah. seeing what this guy's up to. Your Instagram <laughs> post at the end of 2018, because I feel like 2018 is when that was your breakout year to say, yeah. all right, dude, I can't get multiple times through the lineup. Yeah. Boom, here's that cut fastball, see ya. Yeah. All, and now all of a sudden, all right, back it up, 2019. Dude, 200 innings now. Okay, there's that. Well, he had the, he started to fatigue at the end of 2018. Everything mm -hmm. else, yeah. so I feel like every time there's been that doubt, you've responded, yeah, which is unreal. But going back 2018, you put a post up on Instagram. It was kind of like that thank you fans post. Sure, you had a picture of you pitching, a picture with Ichiro, and then yeah. you had y y your boyfriend Wade LeBlanc. <laughs> Right? Who you're gonna miss, aren't you? 2020. I'm gonna miss him dearly. Yeah. I already do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't blame you, dude. You yeah. gotta have those guys, man. So in the great, man. He's such a great friend. You had man. a picture of Mike Zanino, mm -hmm. and then I think it was was it Monica's family, your wife's family. Yep. yep. Yeah. Could have been, yeah. I don't know if you remember yeah. or not. I'll have to look back on it. Yeah. So when you when you, when you put this, and I don't want to, to dissect this too much, but when you're putting this thing together, are, is that selective putting these photos up? Trying to. I mean, it's a, it's a big post. I know it sounds yeah. ridiculous, but you're kind of like saying thank you. You've just come off. A year of 2017, yeah. you, you probably left 2017. You weren't too happy with it. Sure. You know, you want to prove yourself. 2018, you just kill it, mm -hmm. right? And you're a dude now. Yeah. You're about to go into be the opening day starter. So is there any kind of method behind that? I mean, truthfully, no. I mean, there wasn't like a <laughs> hidden message in there. Is that what you mean? Like if well, there's like a like a encrypted, you know, like, no, I think. Well, you got Ichiro, you got Wade. I'm trying to like piece this together a little bit. I was bit. trying not to leave anybody out. I'm like, gotcha. I got I to gotta include all my friends. Right. And, and I thought, you know, me and Ichi, I thought that was just a fun picture. We had a cool handshake. And I'm like, man, who's got a, who's got a handshake with Ichiro? That's the coolest thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, if anything, they were just like my favorite pictures from the year. I'm just sitting on my phone like late night, like scrolling, like which which pictures are my favorite ones, you know? And so, um, you know, it's just, it's things like that. And I had one this year too, where I kind of just look back and you start to reflect and all the, you know, pictures from the year. And it's just, it, it's fun because you know how it, it takes every single day for like eight months and you look back when it's over and you think, wow, that was such a wild experience. I gotta, I gotta recap it somehow and try to put it into a picture or something. So. Right. And another big percentage of, I did a whole percentage breakdown of what you're posting about. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> Monica, your wife, right? Uh -huh. you, you know, you guys are, there's a bunch of photos with you guys together, obviously, yeah. as you do. Yeah. How do you guys meet? We met in college. Um, we were freshmen at Gonzaga together, and we were actually there's one co-ed dorm at Gonzaga. It's a very Catholic, private Jesuit school. I mean, it's very, very straightforward. Um, there's one co-ed dorm. The boys are on the bottom floor. The girls are on the second floor, and that's where we met. Um, we had mutual friends, and and we ended up just like the first month of college, ended up running into each other, and 
she she was I, I was I was into I was like head over heels right away like I was she's just like drop dead gorgeous like I was like I this girl is amazing and uh so I I pursued her and and asked her out a couple times and she's kind of playing hard to get and kind of didn't want to date a baseball player kind of thing so well you you got the Zags gear on right now were you walking around with the Zags yes. the team backpack walking no, around hopefully no, hopefully no, walking no, no, past no. the thing and yeah, no, I, I, I was, I, I was trying, I I'm like trying, they had a, we had a meeting like first day of practice, like don't be that guy wearing your baseball stuff around campus, like don't be the, the clown that's, you know, ro- repping, but um, I was trying not to be that, but uh, no, she, she knew that I was a baseball player and um, she just, she was unsure and, and, uh, and it wasn't until the spring we went on a kind of a formal date and um, we kind of started dating at that point and so we never look back. We're just we've been together since. So yeah, it's been great. And you know, it makes it easy too when when you've got you know a sounding board or someone. Right. You know, you're dating who who gets it. Support. She, yeah. Support, man. Yeah. It's it's crazy. I mean, I've had friends that, you know, marriage is just they just don't happen because there's yeah. just a complete this one. Yeah. Especially when you when you get done playing too. Yep. If you guys can't connect, yeah. she's a personal trainer. Yeah. Right. And you were telling me on the elevator up on the way up here, you, you tried to do her orange theory class, yeah. but you yeah, kicked yeah, your yeah, ass. Yeah. You couldn't cope. Well, so she knows what buttons to push right. for me. Uh, she knows that I'm like a huge competitor. So like in the class, I'm running on the treadmill, like feeling pretty good. And it's like, okay, push pace. Like you push yeah. it, you go faster. She walks by. I'm like putting it up. She walks by and pushes it up like three <laughs> ticks more. So I'm like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, tr- I'm like falling off the treadmill, and uh, and then we get on the rowing machine, and I'm like, "Okay, it's like a I hate min- the rowing. It's, it's like dude. a minute it's long. It, yeah, it kicks my ass." So I'm on like a minute long, and she goes, "Hey," uh, and it's how how much distance to see how you can get, see how much you can get in a minute. And she walks by and she's like, "Hey, uh, I got I got 330 meters in a minute. What are you gonna do?" And I'm like damn it. Like, all right. So then, so then I'm just going all out, you know? And so, um, so she knows what buttons to push and she's, she's just a drill sergeant. And then she's, she's one of the best train orange theory trainers in, in certainly the region and maybe the country. She's done it everywhere we've lived. Um, she was trained down in corporate in Florida and, uh, she's just, she's had an amazing time and she loves the positivity of it. I mean, helping people be in shape, be healthy, connect, that's the best part about it. Yeah, and and then I mean, you know, obviously we talk about your work ethic and the off season working out. We just yeah. came off your workout, but yeah. all those little things, you know, nutrition, having a partner that uh, oh yeah, you guys can you know to work out together. If it is getting generic, now I know you're yeah. a no show Orange Theory after that one session, <laughs> but at the same time, man, it it just makes a huge difference, right? Yeah, this uh, this off season we've uh, we furnished a gym in our house and so we kind of have like a mini orange theory in our house now so it's like it's become like an addiction it's ridiculous but i mean we make you know smoothies we eat really clean um she's super big on nutrition and and um so having that support and i think you know I, i was telling someone this the other day i think people would be surprised to know how many married guys are in the big leagues yeah. and of those married guys have been with that person since college since high school since junior i mean mitch has been with his wife since junior high they've been dating since junior high <laughs> it's 14 year old mitch by the way is classic like how'd they meet you got to look up they went to they were in school together he was just hitting tanks high. in junior high I yeah he's just, <laughs> <laughs> just hitting bombs he's just a stud. Like, yeah but yeah. um no but mitch that's, and mitch like mitch and amanda that's i mean amazing it's just wow. there's like one or two maybe single guys on a team. And I think nowadays with the minor leagues, with social media, with the pressures of today, I think you're, people are overlooking how having a significant other through that actually benefits you. To stay focused, to not be going out, to not be doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, and to have that support system through it, I think is one of the reasons why I'm here. Yeah. So, I mean, we run, when I say we, I talk about my wife and I, we, it's our career, our life, because it takes both of us. Yeah. She handles our life outside of baseball, organizing family events, tickets. I mean, there's so much that goes into it during the season that I can't focus on and do that she has to do. Bagel appearances. Bagel appearances. <laughs> yeah. Designing our own bagels. I yeah. mean, things like that where like, right. we wouldn't be able to do that if we weren't both in fully invested. Where'd she grow up? Did she grow up? She grew up in Redmond. Redmond. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so easy, man. easy transition. Because I was going to ask you, is this a place in the Northwest? Do you think you'll stay here after your career? I mean, yeah. whether you stay with the Mariners or you go on, is this a place that you feel like, oh, man, I want to I 
yeah. settle down here? Yeah, I think um, I, we had decided that shortly after we got married in right. 2015. So this was two years before I even got traded. We decided we were going to live in Seattle. We were going to be close to her family. Yeah. Um, we were going to have kids here. We we're going to hopefully buy a house here someday. And when we got traded, we were like, uh, I guess it's meant to be. I guess this is where we're supposed to be. So we bought a house and uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna be living here, I'm do you, sure. Do you still have buddies from high school? Yeah, I have buddies from high school. Um, you know, uh, the group that I was kind of friends with, we kind of dispersed. We were a bunch of baseball players, kind of went our own way. Um, but I get to see them throughout the year. I get to see all my Gonzaga buddies throughout the year. Um, so it's, it's just, it's been a good, you know, having that community is always good. Yeah, you know, and, and the reason I ask that is I have, and this is going to sound sad, but my only group of friends, no, not my only group of friends, but I'm still buddies with, my, with high school friends back in Australia. And they've kind of like, you know, split, but we have a group chat. Yeah. Right, where we just go back and forth. Now, you guys have a group chat with guys who play at Gonzaga. We do, right? yeah. That's right. Yeah, I heard all about it. I've got screenshots. <laughs> oh, you should no. see the stuff I'm going to post. No, oh, I'm kidding. No. I'm joking. No, no, no he, he no, didn't go no, that no, far. No. We got to I... lock those down. <laughs> no, no, no. There was none of that. He, he just said, he goes, hey, man, we've been on the same group chat. There's like 10 of us. I was like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, yeah. Slow up a second. A group chat? Yeah. No, yeah. I thought that was cool. Man. Yeah, we. Um, it, it's funny. I, I We joke because we look at all these athletes who are saying crazy things on Twitter and I'm like, Hey, just, just get a group chat with your friends and say it there, you know, like yeah. that, <laughs> do it there, <laughs> yeah. you know, like say, yeah. say ridiculous things in the chat, but we've, we've been friends and played fantasy football for, yeah. uh, going on like eight, nine years now. So awesome. it's been, it's been great. Yeah. Now look, you're flying out of here this afternoon. Yeah. You're going to watch the Zags play North Carolina tomorrow right. night. Yeah. Big game. Okay. Huge. Biggest game to ever come to Gonzaga, I think. So. And then after that, you've, you go, where are you, you going to, you got an anniversary coming up? Yeah. Um, our wedding anniversary is on Thursday. So my wife was gracious enough to start the trip with some Zags basketball. Wow. And, uh, and then our what anniversary is on Thursday. So we're driving to Leavenworth. Well, she's for, a Zag, so that's all right. She's, she's good with go. it. We yeah. See, time. I'm getting waved right now. Your agent, your publicist standing behind these, these cameras are waving me off right all now right. to tell me you got to get moving. But dude, <laughs> dude, this has been a blast, man. Hopefully we can do it again. Yeah. It was, it was fun to dive in and, and uh, share some stories. That was yeah. awesome. So thanks awesome. for having me. Cheers, man. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, thanks brother. Appreciate it.